This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, how are you? It's Alex Bennett. This is the Ramble, and we go on until um, let's see here, midnight Eastern Time. So if you're listening to us anywhere in the world, think about Eastern Time in the United States, and then adapt for it. Okay, that's uh, that's my word to you. Let me see. I want to just adjust my microphones a little bit so that I feel that I'm uh, just a little... There we go. That's nice. Yeah, that, that sounds good. Okay. Anyway, uh, I let me... Let me uh, uh, where, where are we? Well, first I better turn on the, uh, on the air sign, otherwise we're not officially on the air. You know, one of these days, this is how I do it. This is a little remote control. My, my wife bought me the on the air sign, and when I click it, it goes on, but it starts to get lost over in all these wires and everything. And one night, I'm not going to be able to find it, and I'm going to have hell to pay from her. Here we go. We're officially on the air. There we go. All right. That'll, that, I just do that to keep her happy. Okay. Anyway, uh, good evening to all of you, and I hope that uh, you're having a, a very decent night or day. Uh, it's going to be a freezing hellhole around here tomorrow, I understand. Uh, in fact, I don't even know if my wife's going to work. I think they gave the whole, everybody at the office the night off, uh, because uh, or the day off, because it's supposed to be, they call it a snow cyclone. I think that's what they were referring to it as, and I've never heard anything like that in my life, but it's pretty, pretty going to be pretty gruesome out there. So uh, if you're living on the east coast of the United States, I would say just get bundled up, get a good book or whatever, because your television will probably go out. Because if you're out in the country and you got a satellite dish and that snow gets on the satellite dish, you're in a lot of fucking trouble, you know. So anyway, um, do that. I was going to play an interview tonight, uh, but I decided, what the hell? You know, we get bigger numbers when I uh, when I'm just uh, <clears throat> talking about various things. Uh, and I've been, you know, I I don't know what it is, but I've been going through just massive amounts of depression lately. And uh, today, I I got even. I, I just get depressed about everything. Uh, for instance, I have a um, I have a program that I use here that generates what we call XML files that speak to everything. In other words, so when I do a show, I put my show into this XML file, I have to post it, and then I post the file, the XML file, to a server somewhere. And then that XML file goes out to our uh, uh, our on-demand feed here. It goes to iTunes and tells iTunes, hey, Alex has a new show. It goes out to uh, our Roku channel, and uh, a new program just pops up right there. On and on and on. It's just uh, it's a continual uh, uh, process. If you just do one post, and then it goes everywhere. Well, I have a program. Let me just change this camera just slightly, ever so slightly. There we go. Um, uh, uh, so I have a program that does that, and it's a great program. It's called Podcast Spitter. Well, all of a sudden, a couple of weeks ago, I'm going, like, have there been any updates for Podcast Spitter lately? I think I'll go over to the Apple Store where I bought Podcast Spitter and uh, check to see if it's still around. And I go and I check, and there's nothing. And I go to their site, and it just says, this space available. The company went out of business. And it, I rely on that thing. It's the only way I can do the on-demand stuff, do the stuff for Roku, um, and so on. So now I'm, I, you know, I have this paranoid feeling. The thing works, and it'll continue working. And I can continue having it work on this machine. 
uh, uh, but suppose I get a new machine. Well, I suppose I could, uh, I could use my backup and then make the new machine like the old machine, which I would probably do. But if I don't, if I somehow that hard drive goes bad or whatever, and I don't have a backup on that deal, I don't have that program anymore. So I went looking for a new one, and I found one tonight that I really liked, okay, that I figured would be kind of in the same spirit as the old one and do all the things I need it to do. Uh, the only problem is I download it, and it says you already have it on your machine. And then it says it's only good for 15 days on the site. And then when I try to get the thing to work, it won't work. For some reason, it won't start up on my machine. And now I'm really getting paranoid and depressed that I'm going to be stuck okay, for the rest of my life with the podcast spitter, which one moment will, uh, someday will sputter, and I won't be able to do all this work I got to do. And I, by the way, I, I, I hate posting those shows. If there's any process in GabNet that I hate more, it's posting those fucking shows. I've got to find a way. I've got to. I'm the reason I was found this program. The reason I was looking for programs is I was looking for programs that other people here could use, that maybe they could start posting their own shows. It's a you know if if you just post your own show, it's a very simple thing. It's a fast process, and we you get the whole thing done, right? But uh, here, every night, I do four of these things, and on Thursdays, I do five of them. And I used to do one for Connections, and that was like six on one night. And I'm, it's just filling out stuff and cutting and pasting and cutting and pasting, cutting and pasting. Now, if you figure four years of GabNet, over four years, and how many shows that I've had to post, it approaches maybe 3,000, 3,500. And... You know, I, I think part of me going crazy is having to post these goddamn shows. So leave it to me. I'm worried that something's going to break or I won't be able to post them. Be really nice because I say, hey, I can't do anything about it. No more on demand. No more Roku f updates. Um, good luck, pals. You know, but I'll find something, I'm sure. <clears throat> I'll write this company who's barely, you can barely get a hold of them. You can't get a hold of companies anymore. This is, this is the big problem we have today. Companies don't want to talk to you. Uh, and so therefore, they uh, just it put the, make it so difficult to get a hold of them. Like, for instance, you don't like Skype. You're having troubles with your Skype. Uh, you want to call the Skype people and see what's wrong? Good fucking luck. There is nowhere you can phone to talk to somebody at Skype. In fact, there is no phone number where you can go and phone somebody at Microsoft who owns Skype. No, go to our FAQ. That'll tell you everything you need to know. You got a problem? Well, write us, a, write us a, a thing to our support stuff, and we'll get back to you eventually. I mean, whatever happened to, to you know, tech support? You know, they used to have, I had a lot of friends when I lived in the Bay Area, had a lot of friends who lived in, uh, in Silicon Valley, and the best job you could get down there was in tech support. And they used to, and they were, they were techies. So when you called tech support in the old days, when it first started up back in the 70s, you got somebody who really knew what he was doing and got you through something and solved the problem and, and whatever. And, and that was terrific. It was wonderful. Just wonderful. Uh, but not anymore. No, you're on your look at the FAQ and then see if that's any of the problems. And if it, the FAQ doesn't work, then FAQ you. Yeah, I ju it's just bizarre. Okay, that you can't you can't talk to anybody anymore. Now I I did have a thing today. I mean I I have uh, you know this program our server for our website uh, and a lot of the stuff that you you see on the web is from GoDaddy, which is a fairly famous company, and they've been in business for quite a while. And some people who I know in the business, oh, you use GoDaddy, lots of luck to you using GoDaddy. But, yeah, they're, they're pretty damn good. You know, I call them, and most times they pick up on the second ring. Today I called them, they said there'll be an eight-minute wait, but if you don't want to wait, just leave your number, and we'll, have, we'll call you. And then with eight minutes they called me, and I talked to them. I solved a major problem. If you now go to gabnet.net on any browser, on your browser or whatever, and you go over to gabnet.net, 
uh, it will suddenly flip over to being HTTPS, which is a secure site. We are now a secure site where, you know, uh, I, I don't know why we have to be a secure site. It's just that Google is planning on making it really rugged for people who don't have what they call SSL, secure service, whatever. Uh, and so I, I paid some money to get that. And so now when you go over there, it's safe. Until you play the iTunes, uh, the TuneIn tuner, and then at that point, uh, the uh, security goes away. Why? Because the signal coming in is not secure. So here's what you do. If you want my site to remain secure, right below the TuneIn thing, there's a thing that says, uh, what, do, what did I say? Something like uh, Safari. If you, if you have Safari or you want a secure connection, click here. And when you click that, it gives you a little player on most machines uh, up in the right hand, up in the corner. Okay? Or it will open up uh, in some things like uh, Edge, I think. It does something else. I can't remember exactly, but it's a big gazorchness, but you can make it smaller uh, to play it. Uh, every every browser is different. That's the other problem in this world. Is every none of the browsers have a compatibility with each other. But anyway, uh, you, then you will get a secure connection, and that security will never go away on the site. But it doesn't really matter. I'm not asking you to send me credit card information or anything like that. And that's the only thing that is uh, compromised, really, in what you say is an unsafe site. So if you go to sites and they don't have that little thing up at the top that says SSL or whatever, then uh, God bless you. You just, uh, you know, what does it usually say? Secure, it says in, in Chrome. Uh, uh, if it doesn't say that and you're going to do some business with that site, be careful because, you know, they are, they're not a secure site and they're not backed up by the security gods who say how wonderful it is for you to be secure. So there, yeah. So anyway, that, that, that's my latest uh, little foray. Tell you something that bothered me yesterday. And, and you know, I've been on this whole binge with um, uh, the whole uh, Me Too thing. Uh, listen, uh, gals out there, uh, is gals proper anymore? Can I use that? Uh, my father used to word the, use the word... Um, um, uh, a dame, he used to use that one. He was older, and what was the one they used to like? Uh, oh God, it, oh, I'm, I'll remember it soon. But uh, he, he used to use some phrases that were not today. He would not be politically correct using them. But they, he didn't mean them in any mean way. He was very, very nice to women. He was very. Um, uh, 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 he wanted to make them feel comfortable. He didn't want to do anything to make them feel uncomfortable. He passed that along to me. And I, I think I've been a pretty good guy when it's come to my relations with the way I handle women. And he never he never talked trash about them or anything else. Um, but he, um, but anyway, what, what, where was I? Oh, yeah. So I, I grew up with this whole thing of the way you treat women is with a great deal of respect. And yes, you're going to have sexual relations with them and you're going to have relationships with them, but don't ever make them feel uncomfortable and be, you know, care about them. And and don't don't put them don't pigeonhole them and don't talk trash about them, you know, like guys will used to get together when I was growing up and they go, "Hey, look at that baby over there. How about the tits on that broad, huh?" And I just couldn't go in for that kind of talk because my father told me not to do it. And I always had a very good respect for women. So let me tell you that when the whole thing came down with Harvey Weinstein, and it goes back before that. I mean, we had the, we had the Bill Cosby thing. Anybody remember the Bill Cosby thing? Nobody even mentions Bill Cosby's name when it comes to these, these problems. And he's still going to trial, okay? Um, I, I was very... Um, how can I put it? I was, I, I was very happy that these things came to light. Wasn't surprised 
we all knew that Hollywood had the casting couch. We always talked about the cast, cast, casting, casting couch, okay? We always talked about it. We knew it was there. We knew it existed. It was no secret. Um, so, uh, but when it happened and there were women who said, you know, we're going to not take, put up with this kind of crap anymore. I thought that was a great idea. And then the Me Too thing happened. Now, the Me Too thing, it's kind of like everybody wants to copy everybody, and Me Too is the perfect word for that. It's like, I can't think on my own, so Me Too. And they started the whole Me Too thing. And people were going down who didn't deserve to get the same punishment as Harvey Weinstein. I've been through this before. I've talked to you about it on the air, and so there's no reason that I should continue to talk about it, except that I something happened in the last couple of days. See, recently I found that they, they are going so far, and they are getting so, what's the word I want to look at, so pissy about the whole thing, that it became, uh, it got to the point where it diminished the value of what had already gone on. Does that make sense? Okay. It had diminished it. And all of a sudden, I noticed there was a certain fatigue that was setting in on the part of the American public about this thing, too. That, you know, they're just not as interested in uh, who, who, which guy came on to which woman, blah, 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 blah. That it was starting to lose its, its, its edge. And the reason it lost it is because we didn't pick our targets carefully. You know, I mean, there was a... a, a, a ballet director at the Met, at the uh, Met that got uh, uh, or uh, whatever that got fired a while but he wouldn't know his name but he oh he he was harassing women you know and um, uh, uh, Garrison Keillor who I've never been a big favorite of you know a big fan of I was never a favorite of Garrison Keillor's uh, uh, I was a big fan of never a big fan of still I I he said you know, the thing he was that happened is this woman complained that he had harassed her sexually. And what the story was, according to Keeler, was the woman was distraught. He put his arm around her to console her, and then he pulled back saying, well, maybe I shouldn't do that. And she says, oh, no, no, thank you for comforting me, blah, 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 blah. And then the next day they get a call from her lawyer. Okay, so it's getting down to that, you know. It's getting down to Garrison Keillor, who's, I think, my age, maybe older, who probably doesn't even care about getting a boner anymore, okay? Al Franken, what did he do? That he got the same penalty as, uh, as, as uh, Harvey Weinstein. So, I mean, it, it, you know, on and on. Well, the thing that got me mad yesterday is I saw that they finally found a replacement for Matt Lauer. Okay, uh, and um, it's Hoda Kotb. C O T. How's that spelled? C O T B. K O T B. That's it. K O T B. Kotb. And uh, uh, she's a very talented woman. I think she's a very pleasing personality on television. Uh, she has all the things that you need to do to be on TV every day. She doesn't wear too badly. You don't get tired of her easily. Uh, she's kind of talented taffy, huh? okay? Best way to describe it. But they give her the job to replace Matt Lauer. Now, I'm thinking to myself, that show now has two female hosts. And uh, the only other males are relegated to minor positions on that show, which is your weatherman, Al Roker, and Carson Daly, who's still running around NBC trying to figure out what his particular talent is. Uh, and it bothered me because I said there should be a man in there. There should be a man as the co-host with the woman. You know, they should have equal billing. And, you know, and that's always been the way it has been on the Today Show. But now it's an all-women situation. And uh, I thought to myself, you know, they made that decision because it was made in light of the Matt Lauer dust-up, and they wanted to prove how politically correct they were. So let's put a woman in there. And I thought to myself, you know something? 
that is sexual inequality. If, if you consider yourself to be a equal opportunity employer, by putting that kind of imbalance in the, in the show, you are suddenly not becoming an equal opportunity employer because you know that NBC from word go, once this Lauer thing happened, weren't looking for a woman, I mean, a man rather, to replace Lauer. They were looking for a woman. And they were doing that because they wanted to be politically correct. And I consider that not being an equal opportunity employer. And there are a lot of capable men who could have gotten the job, but no, I don't think they even thought about it for a second. Hoda went in there as a temporary thing. Uh, the ratings actually got better than when Matt Lauer was on, so they kept Hoda there. Now, granted, Hoda's a very talented woman. She's been at NBC for years. Uh, she shouldn't have had to wait this long for a big break, all right? She should have gotten it a long time ago. But at the expense of putting a man in there and giving a certain equality to that show, I think is wrong. And I think it's, uh, uh, it's, 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 the, it's the reaction to the kind of thing that, we're, that we've been fighting with all this sexual misdeeds on the part of men of power, as it were. So uh, I, uh, you know, I just, I, I, I just don't know how to feel about that. Now, I never watch the Today Show anyway. I sleep through it every day. Uh, and I'm never going to have to put up with it. But, you know, you go over to Morning Joe and you got Joe and you got, uh, uh, what's her name, Mika. Uh, and, and, and the man-woman thing works very well because both sexes are equally represented and both sexes watching the show can relate to these people in the way that they relate to uh, all those people. I think that today's show is, is probably not going to get as big a male audience as it got. I like equality, okay? And I think for years women have been shut out of a lot of businesses. I'm saying businesses because in show business, not so much. Uh, you know, somebody was, I think it was Amy on the, on the, on the intersection who was going, well, we need, we need, we need it. They should replace him with a woman. And I took her to task saying, you know, that would make it unequal and it would make it lopsided. And it would be to me a bad decision from an, from an aesthetic standpoint and from an ethical standpoint. So that's the problem that we ran into. So anyway, I, uh, so they, they, they went and they got a woman. So congratulations, Amy. Now you've got uh, 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 an all-gal all show, as it were. Um, and I, you know, I just, I'm, I'm just amazed, just amazed uh, at what they did. And I think they shouldn't have done it. I think they should have done something uh, where they got another man in there, you know. Uh, and, and the thing now they're griping about is that Hoda is being paid. Ready for this? Hoda's getting paid. A raise uh, to $7 million a year. Yeah, $7 million a year. Remember when that was a lot of money? Today, they had a thing on where people were complaining that Hoda wasn't getting what Matt Lauer made. Matt was making $20 million a year. Well, there's a good reason why Hoda isn't making the same amount of money, and it's not because she's a woman, but because she's yet to get enough power behind herself to be able to put the, have her agent put the screws to NBC and say, we want 20 mil a year. For years, they went under the mistaken impression that that show couldn't exist without Matt Lauer. And then they found out it could. If they had found that out earlier, Matt wouldn't have been getting 20 million a year. He'd be getting 7 million just like Hoda. So Hoda wasn't getting screwed. And quite frankly, 7 million a year is getting screwed. But the Me Tours were out there in full force. Hoda isn't making what Matt Lauer made. You got to give her what Matt Lauer made. No, you don't have to give her what Matt Lauer made. That's ridiculous. You know, yes, eventually, if she if she's on there and the ratings go up and they can sell a lot of time, then she deserves to get a nice chunk of that money. All right. So, uh, that's that's the story. All right. So anyway, I was just I was bothered by that. Uh, and uh, I, I get bothered by a lot of things these days. Um, I'm, getting I'm getting bothered by the fact that I can't do simple tasks anymore. 
I'm forgetting to do things, and I can't do things just right. And I'm, I, can't, I can't grasp technology as well as I used to. It's, it's, yeah, it's getting there, folks. Uh, you know, I don't know if it's Alzheimer's that's setting in, but something's setting in, and I'm not happy about it. And somebody the other day said, well, you know, you're as good as you ever were, Alex. You're still you're feisty. And, and, and I go, no, I'm not. And they go, well, what do you mean you're not? And I said, I'm not. And they say, yes, you are. I'm listening to you right now. You're, you're as good as you've ever been. And I said, no, I'm not. I said, because inside I know I'm not. And I know my, my abilities are waning and starting to disappear. And slowly, and part of that has to do with that fucking, you know, Sirius XM for firing me because if they hadn't let me go, and by the way, I wasn't fired. I was, uh, I was, well, I was fired. What, you know, it's a term. It's something, I had somebody once, I, I, I went in their office and they said, Alex, uh, we are choosing not to renew your contract. And I said, so you're firing me. And they went, oh, no, we're not firing you. We're not renewing your contract. I said, okay, let me get this straight. Monday morning comes. What do I do? Do I come here or do I stay in bed? And they said, you stay in bed. And I said, sounds like firing to me. You know, so they got all these terms. So I, I use the word fired because it's, it's, it's more severe than if I said I was let go I was redundant. That's another one they use. Um, actually, truth of the matter was, uh, I think it was an ageist decision. Okay, that's for one thing, and the other that it was ageist, uh, and it was ageist. So those are the three reasons why. Now, also, I was making a lot of money, and I think they wanted to get away cheaper, just like they are with Matt Lauer now. Yeah, they could have. They, instead of 20 bucks an hour, they could have gotten somebody for seven bucks an hour. And it'd be a woman. But anyway, um, I know it's a lot of people listening to me rant and rave and get testy. And Tonight, uh, uh, Phil isn't going to call because he's got a photo class. Yeah, he's going to have a photo class every Wednesday. He said, you want to do a promotion? Maybe we may do a promo. I'm not going to be on on Wednesdays is a Phil-free night. And I said, no. <laughs> I said, go on, you know. you're Basically, you're a caller to the show. You're not, you know. Nobody's going to go, oh, hey, it's Phil Free uh, Wednesday. I better listen, okay. But I'll let you know the coast is clear anyway. Let me, uh, let me open up the Skype lines here. And then I'll let you talk. I don't feel like talking. I'm in a miserable mood today. Uh, uh, let me see here. One, in fact, one of our, our regulars uh, on another show um, it, it, it crossed me today, and I told her where to go <laughs> because she goes to the on-demand, and she sees that uh, three of the files aren't working, four of the files aren't working. And that's because I put the files up early. So, And I also put up a sign up there saying, you know, the shows will become active once they are broadcast. And uh, uh, she, she didn't notice that she'd been looking at the, she didn't look at the dates. And so I got really testy with her because I, I, I've just had nothing but one little fire to put out after another all day long. So I'm sorry if I was grouchy, you know. But that's what happens when you're an old man. You get grouchy. Anyway, the lines are open, so now I just sit here waiting for somebody to call. Oh, Phil, Phil's not here tonight? Well, then I won't call either. Oh, okay, fine. Um, our number, oh yeah, here's how you call. I can give that little rap while I'm waiting for somebody to call me. Um, you uh, go to gabnet.net and over there it'll tell you what to do. Tell you how to get Skype, how to call Skype, how to call us using Skype. Uh, and uh, it also has a phone number there. If you're too lazy to use Skype or you're too much of a Luddite, uh, you can use that. So, you know, we're cool. So now I just sit and wait. Nobody's calling. Hey, you know, I could actually sign off early tonight if I wanted to. And I could, you know, go to sleep early, whatever. I took a Lunesto last night, and they make me, they make me grouchy. But, boy, they put you out. <laughs> and then I drink, then like an idiot, I sit here drinking coffee, right? 
because if I don't drink coffee, I'm going to fall asleep while talking to you. Okay, here, here, comes, uh, here comes Jeff. I can always count on Jeff, you know? Jeff's, okay. one, Jeff's one of the nice guys. Hi, Jeff. How are you? Good, good. Uh, uh, we got Bree calling from, uh, uh, from, uh, uh, where, where are you calling from, Bree? Once again. <laughs> Hello, Bree. Hello, Alex. Yes. Uh, what, how do you, how do you pronounce the place you, you live in? Uh, Dubai. Dubai. Oh, oh so you're saying, uh, you, cause <laughs> you had me saying Dubai or Dubai. Well, yeah, I got tired of that. We just go to Dubai. <laughs> oh, you mean you got tired of trying to make me change the way I do things? <clears throat> yeah. Oh, okay, fine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're here with uh, with uh, with uh, Bree, and oh, here here comes uh, Mike. We can always count on Mike to join in. Uh, here's Mike. Um, can you turn your camera on, Bree, or don't you want to turn on your camera? No, I, I'm just waking up. Oh, I see. And you don't want people to see what you look like when you're waking up. <laughs> I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hello, Alex and everybody. Hello, Mike. How are you this evening? Good, good. Hey, uh, 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 Reed, I saw that thing on Dubai on their New Year's Eve. Wow. That was something. Yeah, they're doing that every night now. I mean, after they lit up a whole building, Alex. Well, I guess it was, was it, uh, Breed, lights. Well, I have news oh, for you. We yeah. do that here in New York, Mike. But not the tallest building, though, like that, though. Well, we don't have the tallest building in the world here. <laughs> tallest but, residential but, building, I think. We've learned if you build them too tall, somebody can knock them down. Or it sinks. Well, that's in San Francisco. <laughs> True. You know, when I lived in San Francisco, you couldn't build a building taller than 20 stories. And uh, there was a reason for that. Number one, earthquakes, okay? And the other reason was that you have those lovely hills of San Francisco, and they didn't want to obliterate them with tall buildings because the hills are what made San Francisco famous, right? Well, they did away with that law at some point, and these people are building like 40-story, 50-story, 60-story buildings, and now one of them on um, Montgomery Street, I think it is, is sinking into the ground. It's actually leaning. It's, sorry, well, it's sinking, but it's leaning at the same time. It's leaning because it's sinking. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, anybody else have anything to say? Otherwise, good night. See you later. No, uh uh, uh, so, uh, uh, Bree, what'd you do for New Year? Bree? Is Bree still there? Not for me. I guess not. He, not for you? What, he disappear? He's in the, uh, Bree. Uh, Bree, are you yeah. there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, you are there? Oh, okay. Uh, because I can't, because I can't see, I don't know whether you're still there or not. Yeah. Yeah. I had to go out for a second to get my headsets because even though on my iPad, I put it down to one, you know, on the volume, it's still really loud. Really? Uh, it, yeah. So I got I to gotta switch to uh, headsets. You know, um, technically, we can't use Skype here. Why is that? Well, Skype and FaceTime and those kind of things are banned. What is the reasoning behind it? Um, I think it's because they can't can necessarily control it. They can't monitor it or control it. Uh, that's okay. That's one. That's one philosophy. The other one is they can't make money off of it. So <clears throat> they have these alternatives now that they've been promoting. In fact, one was just in the. I'm surprised I got through to you today, actually, because uh, they have these two alternate called See Me. And there's another one I can't even remember what it is. And I said, well, you know, they want me to download that and use that. And I'm like, well, but that I can't call into Alex's show because Alex uses Skype. He doesn't use these other apps. Yeah. You know, and they don't allow FaceTime either. So if you buy an iPad here, it will come without FaceTime. Well, you know, well, that, that seems rather I mean, I was in um, I was in China and I used Skype. 
you know, yeah. uh, uh, China, which is a far more regressive society when it comes to freedoms, allows Skype. They don't allow Facebook, though, and they don't allow Twitter. They don't allow the social media. Yeah, that, or Google. Well, they, they don't it, allow Google. Yeah, right. Um, but, uh, which, I didn't mind that much, but I, you know, but I did, I remember I called here to the States to on Skype to somebody. There was no problem at all. I did it from Gulen, which is south of Beijing. Um, mm. But I'm just wondering, is there is there a religious reason for it, maybe? No, 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 no. It, as I said, the, the two reasons, the two, and, and probably in this order, the number one reason is they cannot make money from it. That's that's number one. And then number two is it might have something to do with the ability to monitor it. Okay. Okay. You know, the, the those are my, you know, two two big reasons. I met the guy now, why, wait a minute, who why, started why would they want to monitor it? For security purposes? Yes, yeah, absolutely. So in other yeah. words, they don't want a form of communication that say a terrorist could use. Right. Yeah. That would be my guess, yeah. and it's probably wise, you know. Yeah. Um, but what it mainly means is that you cannot um, download it or get it on devices that you purchase here. Mm -hmm. But if you already have it mm -hmm. through, you know, another, if you go to another country and download it and bring it back, mm -hmm. then it still functions. But um, they just don't want it in, in, innately available on the equipment that right. you buy. Now, could That's you? That's correct. You, but you'd have to go to another country to download it because you wouldn't have the ability to download it in Dubai. That's correct. And you can actually get devices with it if, depending on where you buy it and where they got it from. So, for example, we have one electronics chain here that's based out of India. If you buy from them, you can get FaceTime and Skype, you know, in, in, innately on the electronic device because it comes from India. But if you buy it from other, like, you know, other electronic stores that are based here, then they won't have it. So, and it's a little confusing because right now, one of the main chains we have is called Carrefour. It's actually a French, it's like the French version of Walmart. Mm -hmm. And they have an ad in the paper lately, and it says, hey, get this iPad really cheap. And the iPad in the circular clearly, clearly has the FaceTime icon on it. So you think, oh, I can get a really cheap iPad, and it has FaceTime. Nope. No, it doesn't have FaceTime. I, I bought one and had to return it. But I, look, I told the guy, I said, look, in the circular, it's clearly showing the FaceTime logo. And he said, "Oh yeah, no, we don't, we don't sell that." So now let me let me say, ask you this. Let's say you take your you probably came back to the United you came back to the United States a couple of months ago. You brought your iPad with you, right? Yeah, yeah. Could you then go online to to Apple and download FaceTime? Or my understanding is no, that you can't. Um, if if I buy the device here and bring it back, no, it's. It has something to do with um, the way, I mean, I suppose I could get somebody to jailbreak it, you know, Yeah. and and then put it on there. But that's a lot of pain in the butt. I'll just buy it in the States, you know, mm -hmm. or, or buy it from India. Yeah, it, you know, what's amazing to me is Dubai is a very uh, modern country, okay? I mean, super modern. City. City. Modern city, yeah. It, what is the actual name of the country it's in? UAE, UAE, United Arab Emirates. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. But it, the country is very modern, uh, incredibly modern, more modern than the United States, I would imagine, because everything's new, right? Yeah, many for, for many parts of the U.S., um, we are, I would agree with you. Yeah. So, In fact, there's a guy here who is a Bitcoin millionaire, and he says, uh, this was in the paper just two days ago, uh, his parents work here uh, as online educational consultants. He, anyway, he invested in 2011. He invested uh, 
couple hundred dollars in Bitcoin. Now it's worth 5.6 million. And he wants to start the best university in the world in Dubai. And one thing he claimed was he said it's more international and a better city than New York City. This was his assessment. I'm, so oh, he I, agrees with you too. I would say, you know, and I've seen photographs of Dubai. In fact, uh, there's a, there, I have Apple TV and uh, they have like uh, screensavers that are beautiful videos of places like San Francisco and all around the world, the Arctic and so on. Do you know what I'm talking about, Jeff? Do you have that? Yes, I've seen that. Yeah, and it's really terrific. Must be on the app. And I could swear that one of them was like Dubai, and it was gorgeous. It was just gorgeous. I mean, the architecture oh, yeah. and the modernity. But when to say that they're that modern, and yet they can't accept or, or get around the idea that Skype inherently isn't dangerous, and FaceTime isn't dangerous, and that they they could have their security and and eat it too. You know what I'm saying? Yes. <clears throat> well, Alex, you're you're exactly right. I, there are. It it's such a contrast because I go through my daily life, and I I think like you do, and to a large extent, I'm like, wow, this is amazing. Like I just I'm going to the Louvre today, which is in Abu Dhabi. Mm -hmm. It's you know Louvre, Paris. But it's here in Abu Dhabi now, so I'm going to go to that today. Yesterday, what did I they do? They the moved new... the whole Louvre from Paris. <laughs> they did. Yeah. They, got they did, and they and they bought the most expensive painting in the world to put there, the Salvatore Muti or whatever. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, which was which was in theory purchased by the new guy running Saudi Arabia, but it was purchased through his cousin. And that, but then they said it was on behalf of. I Abu heard. Dhabi. It, I Ooh. heard it was a Russian oligarch. No, no, it was a Saudi dude, and uh, I think it was four hundred and fifty million they paid for it. So I'm going to go imagine, see that today. Imagine a Muslim buying a picture of Christ. I think that's. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> but that's but Alex, ironic. getting back to your point. Yeah. Um, so you go through your daily life, and it's easy to sort of you know, think, you know, this is so international and this is, you know, newer than New York. But then you'll read something in the paper that'll like bring you, snap you back to reality. Give me an example. And, give me an example. Okay. So I'll give you an example. So yesterday I'm reading the newspaper and it turns out like we have um, the Emirate right next to us. It'd kind of be like, um, you know, New Jersey yeah. uh, to New York. Yeah. They have... Uh, <laughs> They just issued an edict that all this, they're going around to all the stores to check the mannequins to make sure that the mannequins are not dressed provocatively and also that, the, um, that they don't have facial features that would require them to be covered. Really? Yeah. So, like, you, you think about that for a minute, and it's like, come on, guys. Like, seriously? <laughs> you know, you're going around store to store. You're telling the stores. You better watch out if your mannequins are too, <laughs> are too sexy. Is it, so, is it men or, or uh, just women or both? Uh, probably the women, you know. My, my guess would be, but the, the image in the newspaper had the women. Now, that's... That's in an, in an emirate next to us that's considered to be a lot more conservative than Dubai. So, for example, uh, they don't have, uh, to my knowledge, they don't have any establishments that sell alcohol. Whereas in Dubai, it's, yeah, you can absolutely do that. So, so it's not exactly the same. But, you know, but yeah, things like that are examples where you it kind of snaps you back into reality like yeah they still and and this is the thing like um you probably have seen there's a lot of unrest in iran right now right and a lot of that's been nipped in the bud in saudi arabia because they have a younger guy who's coming up and he is he's basically they're trying to get it they're in a reform war they're trying to see who can reform quicker and so Saudi Arabia has announced this huge mega city project right. uh, over near the Sinai that's going to be between Egypt and Jordan and that other country over there. Uh, and 
they're putting like a trillion dollars into it and but you just think like you know can they really modernize that quickly can they really reform and and you know bring all this new technology in and change everything within a couple of years I, and i mean i i wish and hope the best for them but i just don't know yeah you know yeah hey is anybody else going to call us tonight or is this it uh give us a call if you're out there if you're one of the regulars uh, but alex i also wanted to uh mention that you you know you i i do like when you talk in the beginning mm -hmm. um occasionally i do like when you have an interview but um I, I just like to hear you just talk about the day's events or the week, you know, the things that are going on. And one of the things you said was this renewal of the contract. That is absolutely true. That's sort of the new way that things are, are going. When yeah. I was in Singapore, uh, that's how it was told to me. Yeah. They said, uh, oh, you know, we're not renewing your contract, you know, which is it's I think to a large extent it's a way to sort of um, soften the blow. Is that supposed uh, to make you feel better that you weren't fired? I think so. I, I think that there's, there's, <laughs> wait a minute, there's wait a, minute, a wait lot minute. of psychology around Jeff, that. Jeff is uh, saying, is, is raising his hand and saying, no, 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 no. <laughs> yes, I, I, I've been fired. So I, I know a little bit about getting fired a couple of times. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the thing is, the guy who's doing the firing, it's for his benefit. It's not for the person who's going to get fired. It's for the one, because he wants to get rid of him quickly and easily and without a big argument. So he goes, I'm not firing you. It's the contract. Sorry. It, well, it took two people to fire me. They, they, they like had. Yeah, to, no, they, that's they, that's they, also very common now, Alex. Well, because, because they don't want a problem. They don't want a problem. Yeah, that's but right. they weren't going to get a problem out of me. Doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, they wanted two people to somehow <laughs> say yes. We both said to, today with Alex that he's leaving because right. the contract is expired. And funny and part was somebody signs that. And, uh, I never had a contract with Sirius XM. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I was fired. I'm sorry. I was fired. I was booted. Well, do you remember that scene with Kevin Spacey in American Beauty? Which one? The one where he's fired. No. This well, a long he, time ago. He's brought into the office to get fired. And he basically says to the guy, well, and it's just him and the one guy. And he says... Uh, he comes up with a scenario whereby he threatened, he says, uh, can you prove that you didn't harass me in this meeting, blah, blah, blah. And he, he ends up getting a larger severance package as a result of his manipulating the one person who's firing him. So if there are two there, the theory is that they can back each other up as witnesses I in see. terms of what happened. I see. Okay, well, yeah, you know. Yeah, the, the one time that I got fired, I said, uh, I said, well, and we're going to give you uh, two months of severance. Yeah. And I said, well, thank you, but that's not enough. I want more. Uh -huh. I swear. <laughs> I, got, I got another month. <laughs> Good for you. I got, I got six weeks of severance. After working there for nine and a half years, right? Six weeks. Motherfuckers, you know. Alex, what I don't understand is why couldn't they just say, I mean, if you think it was about financial, why couldn't they just say, well, you know, we can keep you on, but we'd have to reduce your salary? Uh, or that was never even offered. That was never even offered. I don't think, I, I think money had something to do with it. Because between uh, Albert and I, Albert was the high, about the outside of Howard's producer, the highest paid producer in the building. And I, uh, and I wasn't getting huge money, but I was getting better money than who replaced me, 
who only got $35,000 a year. Right. You know. Uh, I mean, they'll pay a fortune to get somebody like Jenny McCarthy who gets them three listeners, but because she's a name. And if you're not a name, you get $35,000 a year. It's serious. Well, when I went in there, I got a lot more because they didn't. the guys who were running the place at the time appreciated talent and knew you paid them, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, they couldn't, they really couldn't bring me back in and say, hey, we're going to give you 35000 a year or you can stay because they didn't want to have to admit to themselves that it had to do with money. You know? But, Alex, do you think, like, okay, I'm going through kind of a similar situation, or and I have historically, mm -hmm. but isn't that the point at which uh, they're telling you that's when you are sort of still a hot commodity, so to speak. Like if you're, if your odds of getting another job are out there, they're probably at the point where you're still with someone. So in other words, if you were, if, if you had gotten another offer from somewhere else yeah, that would sort of prove your worth, then they might feel more obligated to keep you. I don't know. I agree with that. The, the, the best thing you could do is get another offer from somebody else, and you bring it into the boss, and you go, gee, I really enjoy it here, but somebody just gave me a, a better offer. Uh, what you, you know, what well, can actually, you do? I, actually, while I was right. at Sirius, I did get a better offer, and I turned it down. And it was a significant better offer to go back to San Francisco and to work but in San Francisco. But did you tell Francisco. them about it? No, no, because I mm. didn't, I, I'm sure that they would have probably said, okay, if you can get better money somewhere else and you want to go, go. But I looked at the long term. I knew that the, the San Francisco offer was a short-term offer because I, it, it wasn't going to work, you know? Yes, they were willing to pay me this money because I had a name in San Francisco and they were willing to pay for that name. But once it didn't get ratings or once the station wasn't doing well as a whole, you know, I knew I had a certain amount of security at Sirius. They liked me. They, you know, we had a good relationship. I mean, the fact that I lasted nine and a half years is testament to that, you know. Yeah. And I, and, Believe it or not, they replaced me. They, they gave me the offer. I turned it down. So they went out and they hired Willie Brown, who was the former mayor of San Francisco, and Will Durst, my friend Will Durst, to do a morning show, which lasted exactly six months. Well, what would have happened if I had gone in there? It might have just lasted six months. I liked the people I was working with, you know. And at that time, I was also, I had a great boss uh, who was running the company by the name of Mel Carmison. Right, and, yeah, you've and, mentioned. And uh, I felt more secure there. You know, and I said, yes, I can I, I could make better money by going to San Francisco. But, you know, it's like, hey, I'm going to make a million dollars a year to go to that uh, station uh, across town. Oh, what? I'm fired after six months? Well, I guess it wasn't a million dollars. And yeah. I can't work again for the rest of my life because I'm getting too old now and I'm out of work. So I took the I took the best I attitude, and that was stay right where you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you there is also an issue with it. when you tell your employer that you have another offer. It sort of implies. I mean, you can't play that card, you know, more than maybe once, because then it's like, oh well, it seems like you really want to leave here because you're constantly coming. They could view it that way instead of viewing, wow, we're really lucky to have you because you have so many other offers. And uh, it's great that you, you know, choose to stay here and that, and that you are staying here. But you, you can only pull that card so many, maybe once, before they start to look. I mean, your situation also is different because the radio industry itself was changing. Um, and I, I think that, you know, Sirius XM was, you know, the best game in town to a large extent. It was, it was unique in that you had so many stations all in one place and that you could be heard around the country. And, well, there, uh, it, it was, a, it was, it, yeah, but it was a, it was a bad bet on another level. Uh, there was a time there where it almost went out of business. We were within, yeah, we that. were within a day of of being able to keep the doors open when somebody came in and put an infusion of cash into the company. The stock had gone down to five cents. Okay, I remember. I own a lot of it. Yeah. 
I wish I had bought. I, I wish I had bought. A, I wish I had bought about ten thousand dollars worth at five cents because I'd be very wealthy today and could tell you all to go fuck yourself. Uh, no, I'd still be doing this. Uh, yeah. But the the point is that that uh, it was, uh, uh, it, you know, it was a very chancy deal. This whole satellite radio thing. But yeah. we got a, across to the other side. You know, somebody came in. Uh, took over the company or took over forty uh, percent of the company to bail them out, and uh, it there was a turnaround there. But there was that one weekend I remember where we didn't know whether we were going to be coming in on Monday, and on that Monday I went to the break room and there was Mel Carmazan, and I said I want to thank you, Mel, because we knew what had happened. He had managed to get this guy to buy in forty percent of the company, and I said. Uh, I really want to thank you on behalf of everybody. He said, for what? I said, for saving our jobs. He says, you don't know how close it came. He said, hmm. we were that close to yeah. closing the doors. Well, you know, it reminded, it reminds me of the Hollywood originally was called the studio system. And then it became the star system. Mm -hmm. And Sirius XM was, is almost the reverse it's a, it almost it took the radio industry, which had become a star industry, you know, it, within regions, and was turning it into the studios back into the studio system. Yeah. Do, do you see that parallel? Uh, somewhat, somewhat. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm doing? I'm making my picture larger because uh, since nobody else is calling, I may as well let people see me too. You know, there we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> almost as big as you guys. Um, hey, hey, anybody, well, would somebody else call, too, so we can get a real robust discussion going instead of a couple of us talking to each other? You know, uh, uh, but uh, anyway. Well, Alex, no. the, um, yeah, I, well, I had a, the, in my situation in Singapore, mm -hmm. uh, when my contract was not renewed, it was, it was then later renewed. They, they gave me the option to renew it, but at a lower uh, title and a lower salary. Yeah. Yeah. And then I was like, no, uh, because I, I think I'm still worth more in the market, you know, in the global market. Yeah. And sure enough, that turned out I, I, w I made the right bet. But I could have just as easily made the wrong. You know, I, maybe I didn't get another offer yeah. and maybe I should have stayed, you know, but it, it worked out. But, um, yeah. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> and, well, you know, I face a different problem than you. You're still, how old are you, Bree? Uh, <laughs> you're always trying to get that out of me. <laughs> <laughs> you looked, I'm, I'm younger than you by you, a few years, Alex. By a few years. I'd say by about oh, maybe 30 years at least. <laughs> I always told you, you, you should work for the FBI or the CIA yeah. <laughs> because you're a good interviewer, always trying to get the information. Yeah. So, uh, but, you know. Uh, I'm older than I look. Well, uh, you may be older than you look, but the point is that you are young enough where there's still jobs out there. Uh, yeah. You know, I, this is a business that I have always loved. I mean, I love it. Uh, I have it, I, my passion for the work that I do is pretty pretty fierce, as it were. And yet, uh, I I realize that I'm probably never going to work in it ever again. You know, because I am too old. I cannot walk into a, a radio station and say hire me, and they go, oh, okay, young man, come on in, start doing a show. Mm -hmm. They look at you and they just dismiss you. You become invisible. You've disappeared. You know? Oh, Alex, that's the reason why I left radio and the record industry and the music industry. Yeah. Uh, it was precisely the, the, well, the wait, way wait, wait, I wait, Jeff, Jeff wanted to say something, and since oh, you okay, can't see right. him waving yeah, his hand. Wasn't that different many years ago where uh, when, uh, when radio demanded experienced people oh when i first came to new york at 29 years old i was the, i was the youngest person working in new That's york radio on a major radio station that's what i mean you know and um uh, now if you're 29 you're approaching uh mm -hmm. 
having your contract not renewed. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, uh, it, 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 age is, it's a very ageist society now. And um, I'm capable of still doing the job, I think. Uh, I don't Fine. think I agree. So, Alex, you have to start the hashtag Me Too for, for ageism. Well, <laughs> you know, I mean, nobody cares about ageism. You know why? Because the people who can react to it aren't old. And the people who can help aren't old. And old people are, you know, they, they don't have the strength to do a movement. You know, they have a strength to, to you know. And I, uh, I think that's why old people are taken advantage of. That's why vicariously uh, people like the Speaker of the House uh, are, are saying, well, we've got to get rid of uh, Medicare. We've got to get rid of, uh, what's that noise? Uh, we've got to get rid of uh, Medicare. We've got to get rid of, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 Social Security. You know, because they don't care about yet older people. What do they think we're going to do if you kill Social Security? What do you think Alex, we're going to do? Alex, I need to hang they, up and call back in. I'll call back. Uh, it, 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 you know, if they kill Medicare. Well, now we're down mm. to two people, folks. This is my worst nightmare. Uh, where is everybody tonight? It's like what? Well, no. It's cold. <laughs> well, no, but if it's cold, they're indoors and they should be calling. I'm in Florida today. Uh, oh, you are? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm going to be here. For, yeah, but it's snowing in Florida. I I, I know. It's it's cold. Uh, we, everybody's got jackets. Everybody's freezing around. Well, they call this a, what, a snow cyclone, I think, was the term they used. Have you ever heard it's, such a term? No. Uh, it's, yeah. a, it's a new theory, right? Yeah, snow cyclone. So, um, yeah, that's snow cyclone. No, uh, a snow cyclone. There he is. Now he, he now he looks 50. Uh, <laughs> 40. Four, I'd, say you're, I'd say he's 41. Huh? <laughs> well, we just um, lost his picture. He's yeah, I, guess, I have to switch. I have different routers and stuff, and I, I, it's hard to explain. Yeah. Anyway, uh yeah, well, you're gonna get you're gonna get hit with the snow cyclone, and Donald Trump said we could really use a lot of that global warming right now, couldn't we? Well, you know, but, we had quite a day with with Donald. Um, yes. well, what did he do this time? Well, he didn't do yeah. anything. Uh, yeah, we but got I, I, what's his I name? I got a big kick out of his. My button is bigger than yours, and it works. <laughs> yeah, well, to begin with, he doesn't have a button. There's no such thing as the button. OK, <laughs> those guys carry the footballs with them and that carries the codes so he can call all the different generals and stuff and decide if they're going to drop the bomb. But he doesn't have a button he can push. If, if, if he had that, I'd be really worried. That's you know, funny. there are a couple of people between him and dropping the bomb. Let me put it that way. But not enough. Though. Uh, what's his name? His uh, his aide de, former aide de camp uh, over at Breitbart. Uh Oh God! See, this is where I'm falling yeah. apart. I can't remember names. Um, how about you, Mike? Do you know the name? It's a, general. Is it a general? No, it's not. No. Steve Bannon. Steve Bannon. Yeah. Wrote, he wrote a book, yeah. and he said that Donald Trump Jr. committed treason. Wow. <laughs> he said that it, it was treason. That, that he was canoodling with the Russians and uh, that, uh, that Donald know, knew all about it, you know, and on and on we go about this. So here, here come some people. Now, now, we, now we've got a citizens panel to beat the band. Here we go. That's yeah. Good. Hi, Michael Klein. Happy New Year. Yeah. So a anyway, we've really got a real uh, imbroglio going here. I think the president may start being caught just... Because Steve Bannon, I don't know what Steve Bannon, and why he got a stick up his ass and wrote this in this book, but it's very damning. It says that Trump Jr. met with the Russians in Trump Tower, and they were talking about them being able to meet with Donald, and he said they may well have met with Donald, and that Donald knew about all of this going on. Trump wasn't returning his calls. That could be. But for whatever reason, 
uh, Trump is now saying, oh, Steve Bannon's gone crazy. He's gone off the rails. He's nuts. You know, I mean, the only way he can defend anything isn't to say, no, that's not true. And here's the reason why. All he can do is say the guy's crazy. Now, uh, ad hominem attacks. I, I heard somebody he, where was he on one of those one of those talk networks or something today talking about who's crazier, Donald Trump or Kim Jong Un. And they decided that it's Donald Trump. I agree. Of course. That, that Kim Jong-un knows everything he's doing. He's very rational about what he's doing. It's a game he's playing, and, and, and he's, he's getting listened to, you know? So, you know, it, it, it's... it's uh, but it was so nice to hear that he was finally in some kind of trouble on this thing. And it really bothered him because it's from Bannon. He says, well, you know, Bannon really, I never talked to Bannon when he was here in the White House and I never had anything to do with Bannon. And, and all you ever saw were pictures of him with his nose up Bannon's ass for crying out loud. Oh, here comes Patrick. Wow. I mean, that's always Trump's approach to any, anybody. Yeah. It's like, I hardly ever knew him. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and he left very quickly. And uh, it didn't work out. It didn't work out. Yeah, it, right. we didn't renew his contract. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so. Yeah. What, what do you think about this, Patrick, this whole thing with uh, the, that came out on Trump today from Bannon? I think anybody that believes Bannon is a moron. I mean, six what, what, months ago, what? a year ago, we were all talking about how Bannon is racist. He's... Uh, white supremacist, he's a piece of shit, he's this, he's that, and now all of a sudden everybody on the left is <laughs> as, a, as a soothsayer. You know what? I don't believe a thing Bannon says. If it comes out as true, fine. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. But do you believe anything Trump says? It, again, I'm not taking any of that <laughs> at face value. But for anybody to sit there with a straight face and say, well, you know, Bannon might have a point. I think they need their head examined. I mean, it's just ridiculous. <clears throat> on, this show, on this very show, six months ago, a year ago, everybody oh, saying right. Bannon's oh, no. a racist. I, listen, leader. listen, you, you make a very important point here, and I have to agree with your assessment of the situation. <clears throat> yeah, you know. Patrick, Absolutely. what are you trying to do, bring us back to reality? Yeah. We had one day of real. We fun. had a little little reverie. <laughs> we were in here with, but let, forget Steve Bannon. There's well, a, the way the a, way they said they wrote this book, um, Peter Wolf was was pretty much given like side access to well, all this. Well, wait crap. a minute. No, that was the other book, isn't there? Aren't there two books? There's Bannon's book, and the, or they're all the same book. No, it's Wolf. It's Wolf's book, and yeah. it's called Fire and Fury. Yeah, and. He was kind of like, he said that he was like a fly on the wall. He got access to places that he didn't think he would get access to them. And that's where he heard, uh, he heard Trump calling Yates a cunt. He heard, uh, <laughs> he heard, uh, what was the other one? Ah, uh, shit. There was another one he called, uh, That'll come to me here. Well, I, I didn't even yell at Melania about something, and that at the uh, at, at the night of the election that he won, he was very depressed that he won. He he thought he after this was all over, he'd just go home. You know, he he, he looked that way. Yeah, and that at the <laughs> he looked like oh shit, what I do? <laughs> and that at the uh, at the inauguration, Melania was pissed as hell at him. And if you look at her, she supposedly doesn't look too terribly happy. Yeah, see what you did? Well, she always <laughs> seems to have the, the look of, somebody please get me out of here, get me away yeah. from this guy, you know. She's like, you know, it's like, like uh, she's looking at him like, you asshole, what did you do this time? See what you did, you son of a bitch. <clears throat> yeah, you went in and won, you fuck. You know. Well, Donald Trump had the best life. He had a hot wife. He had... He could go golfing whenever he wanted. He could do whatever the hell he wanted. But he wanted. was also he, up to his neck he, in debt, too. And I think this bailed him out because everybody forgot about the debt. You think so? I don't know. I don't Pat, think so. Pat, I'm still going to be with him, though. Patrick. I, I, think, I think he was drawn wait, by wait, the wait. power. 
Patrick, I, uh, I recognize Patrick here. I have to say that because Bree doesn't have a, he can't see what's going on. Or can you see the panel, Bree? Bree, you there? Yeah. Uh, anyway, Patrick, what were you saying? Um, I was listening to one of your local talk shows today, and they were talking about the whole thing between Bannon and, and Trump. And to the point of Melania being upset that they won and, and that, um, and that, you know, the point that Donald had all the money, he had whatever he wanted, the hot wife. People with huge egos need more to do. And the point that was made on the talk show today was you really have got to have a huge ego to want to be president. And Donald Trump fit that. But also, so did Bannon. But Bannon didn't run for president, and part of the problem that came up is Bannon thought that he was going to be the um, like the horse whisperer for Trump. Yeah. So he had the two egos that are both larger than life, right. and it doesn't work. You know. And well, when you Bannon, say people with large egos run for president, I don't know that Obama had that big an ego. You have to, not, not in the negative sense, but you have to have the ego in the sense that you are so confident in your abilities to run the country and to make the right decision mm -hmm. to do it. That's why somebody like me would never run for president, yeah. because I may have some good ideas, but I don't have the confidence that I would make the right decision. Right. So is that, it ego, or they're just believing what people are telling them that they could do? Uh, that that's true as well. But you've got to, you have to have that extra step. So Obama, even though it wasn't the ego that we think of in a negative sense, it's still an ego. He still felt that he was better than Hillary. He was better than anybody else, and he was going to win the presidency. Takes a lot of balls to do that. Um. Uh... Big balls, small hands. <laughs> and a big button. <laughs> and, a, and a big button. I got my buttons bigger than your button. My <laughs> button's works. this big. What? Cialis takes care of that. Right. Yes, uh, Jeff. I think Trump, had, uh, you can call it ego or whatever, but I would say that he has plenty of experience in being in positions before he became president where he made mistakes and you know what after he realized after a while you can make mistakes and just keep going and tell everybody that you did a great well, job he was, in, anyway, he that, was that's that's the corporate in him yeah that's well right. no but also you got to realize what trump had that's as what makes him a president trump he, when trump had his company trump was the product okay <clears throat> trump was the product uh, he, all those buildings that have his name on them, he didn't build them. You know, somebody else built them and paid him to put his name on it because Trump was an important name to put on a building at, at a certain point. It was a brand name, the signature of the whole thing. You know, it was, it was a brand name. And that's what he was pushing. And when he did uh, The Apprentice, that solidified the brand. And so he identified the brand by doing that show. And what he did is he made everybody think that he was richer than shit when he really wasn't. You know, if he was a billionaire, he squeaked by into being a billionaire. He wasn't that wealthy. Uh, but he made a living out of being the millionaire, playing the billionaire. And what was he doing? I mean, what kind of billionaire goes around selling ties and jams and jellies? You know, <laughs> I mean, a billionaire has better things to do with his life than that sort of thing. Or, or don't, oh, don't forget steak. I forget. I'm just going to mention the steaks. Anybody ever have a Trump steak, by the way? No. Mm, probably tasted like asshole. Uh, but <laughs> I think I went on a Trump airplane. Now. There was a Trump Airlines, wasn't there? Yeah. Yeah, for, it didn't last. None of these things lasted. The steaks didn't last. That's right. The it was like New Jersey, he West. had the whole. The ties stuff. didn't la last unless you wanted one that went down and covered your penis like his do. 
you know. Uh, I mean, I uh, uh, he he really was not a great businessman. How many bankruptcies? How do you have a casino in Vegas go belly up? I mean, that's a fucking license to print money for crying out loud. And he Wait, went, so hotel went out of business? Hmm? What? His hotel? Taj Mahal? Trump. Yeah. Think about Atlantic City. Yeah. Yeah. He, he lost lots of businesses. He was very good at losing businesses. But the only yeah. thing he was really pushing was the Trump brand, the Trump name. That's what he did for a living. Eh, go figure. You know, I mean, and there are enough idiots out there to bought into it. Yeah, everybody bought into it. Uh, you know, and one time on the air here in New York on Sirius, I said, uh, I challenge uh, Donald Trump to prove that he's a billionaire by walking in here and dropping $10 million on this desk right now. I said, I bet he can't do it. It's probably was true. You know, he, he nobody could quite figure out what he was worth. That's why he doesn't want anybody to see his income tax return. Exactly, was I was going to say. But, yeah. but ten million <clears throat> rubles he could do. Yeah. <laughs> and a picture also. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, you know, I mean, he 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 fostered the myth that he was a millionaire because that's how he made money was by telling people he was a bil billionaire, uh, and and. Uh, you know, then he tells you how, how popular The Apprentice was. Well, The Apprentice was popular for exactly two seasons. And then it started yeah. to tank. And the only reason it stayed on is because they did them. They were cheap to do. And what they would do is they would do a, a, a season and then bank it. They wouldn't put it on the air. And then when something fell out and they didn't want to have to pay money to replace it with a new, a new series, they simply ran... The Apprentice, which was very cheap as a show, uh, didn't get great ratings, but it, you know it would do better than the thing you might have taken a chance on. Uh, and uh, the fact, the last season of The Apprentice that he did was recorded, I think, a year before. You know, um, I, I know that Gilbert Gottfried, who was on it, wouldn't talk about it because it hadn't it. It was just starting to play when I saw him, and I, you know, and I, I didn't know how far back it went, but he couldn't talk about how it would turn out or any how the next episode would uh, turn out or how he turned out in it. Uh, so that was not a successful show. It was a success, successful show for one season, and yeah, he's t uh, everybody. Oh, the reason we I voted for him. He was on The Apprentice. Yeah, good. And Ronald Reagan f played with a chimp. Come on, America. What are you thinking? You know, you don't hire uh, a doofus who just made a, uh, uh, who made a movie to come in and do your plumbing because he doesn't know jack shit about plumbing. And, you, and in spite of what, you know, Trump is selling about draining the swamp and how terrible everything is in Washington and how corrupt all these people are, I got to tell you, they're professionals. You know, they know what they're doing. He doesn't know jack shit. He can't even read, you know, uh, uh, without losing interest, read a bill to see what's in it. Nor, for, nor can most senators, actually. Nor, nor can most senators, but at least they have somebody who reads it to them. They said that, you know, th there's a story in this book, supposedly, and I just heard this out of the side of my ear, so correct me if I'm wrong. There was a, there was a story in the book about how they decided that they had to let him know what was in the Constitution. <laughs> so they sat somebody down with him who read the Constitution to him and explained things to him. And by the time he got to the Third Amendment, he was doing this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the guy has no concentration. Come on. I want a professional in that job, not a fucking TV piece of furniture. Fat furniture, that, you know. So anyway. And, uh, you know, and, and also, he, so he called, uh, what's her name, a cunt, right? The former uh, attorney general of the woman who was taking over. Uh, Yates, yeah. Yeah, that gives cunts a bad name, you know. <laughs> 
Yeah. Because I love that term. I, I love that term in England. You know, guys call each other cunts. <clears throat> Trying to figure out who who was the other one that he said something to said that she was a good piece of tail. Uh, well, I'm, yeah, I'm sure could, it wasn't. I I'm, one it was. I'm sure it wasn't Sarah Huckabee. No, no. Uh, yeah. She's a she's a good wrestle. <laughs> you know, I, I every day I will see her because they run all, every one of her press conferences. Do you remember that ever happening where they ran every press conference that the uh, that the press secretary gave? Just because they're so exciting, they're train wrecks. Well, uh, well, Ari Fleischer, I think they started with because he was a train wreck, and you know they went on and on and on. Um, but uh, I want look at her and I say. This is maybe singularly one of the most unattractive women I've ever seen. She looks like she'd kick your ass, too. Oh, could be. <laughs> By the way, his her old man, who I should hate, you know, because his politics are just suck. One of the nicest guys I ever had on in an interview. Just really nice and fun. And I was amazed. Because I want, I oh, we got Huckabee coming in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tear him a new asshole, and he just charmed the fucking pants off of me. <laughs> but she apparently didn't get that gene. Nope. Yeah. No, she's a, she looks like a rough one. Yeah, she looks like she'd been rode. But I, I picture her walking out of the, con out of the, uh, the press conference and getting behind the door and going. This motherfucker better shut the fuck up. He's driving me nuts. Well, what I, <laughs> I love, I can just see you know, her saying that when she gets behind there because uh, people my, just my, hum at her with my, questions. She's good at her job. You got to give her. Oh, that. It's just yeah, she knows well, well, how my, to my, my, bullshit my, and move on. My wife loves to uh, loves to yell at the television set, like you know, say to Trump, "Shut the fuck up!" And I'm going, he can't hear you. Okay, he yeah. cannot hear you. I know that. I know we have great technology today, but there's no way he can hear you. And then she will also tweet him terrible things. And I'm going, he doesn't read those things. He didn't pay attention to them, okay? Um, but whenever she sees Sarah Huckabee, shut up, you fat fuck. And I go, <laughs> you know, here's a woman who got a job, and she's doing the best she can. But, you know, I, I just don't know how much longer she can go on being an apologist for this guy and and yeah. you know she 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 never she never she never, yeah, she never lets anything get by her she yeah. you know well we can't uh, we can't she always says well everything you want to know about that just read Donald Trump's uh, tweets well that's the reason yeah. they were asking the question in the first place Spicer would get all flustered huh, huh? Oh, Spicer would get all flustered on that stuff uh, Spicer I think was so happy to be out of there. Oh, you yeah. know he was. You know. Uh, I, I imagine working for Donald Trump. Can you imagine? Forget about the presidency. Before this, what kind of a boss he was? I bet she was a pain in the ass. Oh, got to be the worst. But if you were loyal to him, he'd be loyal to you. No, but if you shine oh. him up, he'll, he'll do anything for you. That's why he loves yeah. Putin. He loved no. the Chinese because they had a parade for him, you know? You know what and that's not, what he's freak, freaking out about, that it's not in the White House. Those kind of people don't exist. Yeah. It's, it's who you, who, if he can get up to Donald Trump's ass, he'll be your friend. If you don't kiss his ass, you're out. In, in ancient Rome, they used to have these big parades after a war or something, and the general would lead his army down the streets of Rome, and people would cheer him. And it was rumored that he, oh, they always had a guy with the general whispering in his ear, fame is fleeting, and, and bringing the person back down to the ground. And nobody, it, it seems like nobody in the White House has the guts to tell Trump that fame is fleeting and you got to handle it a different way, pal, because they're all trying to curry his favor. They know the only way they're going to survive is by, uh, by kissing his ass, by saying what he wants to hear. And the, the true, uh, you know, I always liked when I was doing radio, and I'm not trying to compare this to the presidency, but I always allowed everybody in the room to criticize me. If they didn't think I was doing something right, tell me. 
because I wanted to know your opinion of what I was doing. And he should foster an atmosphere where, hey, come on, everybody, I want your input. What am I doing wrong here? You know, what could I, what if, could I brush up But you're up always on right. You can't be doing anything wrong. Well, that's, that's the problem with it, you know. But, exactly. But, but if you're going to be successful, you, you, gotta, you can't be successful all on your own, you know. Uh, you got to be successful. Um, um, you got. You just got to be successful because you listen to other people. Yes, Mike. Yeah, that's what I was just gonna say. You have to listen to the people what they're telling you, and you know, and keep your you know keep your mouth shut when you need to keep your mouth shut. Yeah. But you have to listen to the people, and you learn a lot a lot that way. Yeah. If you don't keep your mouth shut, hey, you're gonna act like a like Bonzo, the chimp. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like More or less. By the way, I, big night tonight, folks. I'm wearing jeans. Yay! Because my belt isn't tight. Yeah. But, you know. <laughs> yeah, but hey, I... Hey, hey, you keep those pants on. No, I... I got to <laughs> tell you something. What? Um, this, my experience with students yeah. is that if you... As a professor, if you make an error or if you make some kind of small mistake yeah. and you acknowledge that, there is a certain percentage of the students who will take try to take advantage of it in order to figure out how it benefits them. So, you know, I understand uh, where Trump comes from to a certain extent. Uh, when you admit uh, I mean, he, I think he goes too much in the other direction. I mean, he, but that's his MO. You know that when you deal with him, he's never going to give you an inch. He's never going to capitulate. Mm. He's always right. Well, so I, you know, that's, that's, that's his I'm nature. Saying, from my own experience, if you give an inch, sometimes you're giving a mile. Well, I don't think that, I think you don't have to give, you know, it isn't a question whether you give an inch or not. I mean, this is a guy who's just intractable. He never wants to be wrong, you know, and we're all wrong, you know, and, and you have to be able to take criticism from people around you. In fact, you want people to tell you when they think you're doing wrong. You want, you don't want a bunch of yes people around. That's, that's, that's deadly. Yes, Jeff. The when I when I ran an engineering company, the one thing that I always think that I did pretty well was I said, I want to get six, seven of you guys to sit down and I want to hear what you have to say. Yeah. And I want to brainstorm. And you're allowed to be wrong. As a matter of fact, let's hear all the bad ones, why it shouldn't work. And, and tell me all the good ones that you might think work. And... And, and then let's kind of spend enough time to kind of put some of the wild, crazy ideas and then also look at the, the normal ones and then make some good decisions on which one is really going to work for us, yeah. so to speak. And I was very proud of doing that kind of stuff. And I think, I think the people did who worked with me uh, were pretty happy about that kind of stuff. And I thought we were pretty successful for a long, long time doing that stuff. Right. But Trump doesn't want to do that. Not at all. Never. No. Yeah, and there's certain people that do that. I did the same thing, Jeff. And and it gets people involved. They they feel like they're part of the, the system. But there's some people that just don't think that way. They want to be the ones making the decision, right or wrong. And they want to make the decision. And if they're wrong, they'll find a way to make it look right and move on. That's that, and that doesn't that doesn't gain you any kind of credibility as you're moving along. Right. Oh boy. Well, so much for that. Yes, people. That's they are yes people. Yep. Yep. So here we are, three days into the year, and he's off to the races again. You know, I, I I think are we ever is is America going to suddenly have Trump fatigue and that he he when Trump fatigue sets in, what seems like it probably will wind up happening is he will simply start crying louder and louder, 
and try to be but more. But what's that fatigue going to mean? I mean, what's it? If, I mean, just because the America has fatigue, there's something they can do for four years, right? Well, you know, I mean, look, you really look, think we're going to be able to impeach this well, guy? When we had a, a president like like Obama, okay, for whatever you think of Obama, I know Patrick probably you weren't crazy about him, but he's not looking half bad now, is he? Uh, <laughs> you know, as a matter Don't of fact, I'll I'll, 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 I'll I'll see you better than that. Uh, George Bush doesn't look that bad now. Yeah. Okay. I okay. take Mick Romney, George Bush. You know, when we all sat there with Bush going, how bad can this, how much worse can this get? I think we just found out, you know? Yeah. Um, so be uh, be careful of what you wish for. But anyway, uh, Obama, you go for a week and you wouldn't hear from him. You know, he, get to be, he was doing work. He was getting stuff done. Every day this guy has himself in the news. He wants to dominate every news cycle. And people call, listen to this show, and you say, how come you're always talking about Trump? Well, because he's always in our fucking face. You know, we'd love to talk about a lot of other things. There are a lot more important things in this world than Donald Trump. Although I can't think of any now, because he may bring the end to civilization as we know it. You can't just bait uh, the craziest, second craziest man on earth. Just don't bait him. Wait a minute, who's the craziest? It's ridiculous. Wait a minute, who's the craziest man on earth? Kim Jong Un. I don't know. I don't know if I don't know if Trump's just a little bit higher on the crazy scale. Depends on what day it is. You know. Well, you know, is Are one, we measuring it, by button size? Yeah, Patrick. Patrick's <laughs> got his hand. Before I go to Patrick, I just want to say that the advantage that we have with Kim Jong-un is he does know he has a very tiny country and that he could be decimated if he makes a wrong move. And so he's being very careful. You think careful. that? You really think so? I do believe that, yes. I do believe that. I think that what he's doing, I'll get to you in a second, Patrick, is he's trying to jockey for position. He's trying to get, he feels that with the nuclear devices and all of that, he's got some negotiating power that he might not have otherwise had. That's why he's but running. But all, he, all he's doing is losing position with the UN. He's he's getting more and more. He doesn't care about him. he doesn't care about that. What he cares about is negotiating position. Where, for instance, now maybe he can go to the table with South Korea and he can get some of the stuff he wants. You know what I'm saying? In other words, South he, Korea. Well, he nobody was taking him seriously when he didn't have nuclear devices, right? And now they are. So I think he, I think he, he knows what he's, he's not doing. Getting what he wants. With I, the I, I don't think devices. he's, a, I don't think he's the sharpest knife in the drawer. But I would say, if there was a danger of a bomb being dropped on anybody, it's a bomb being dropped on North Korea rather than a bomb being dropped on the United States by North Korea. Anyway, Patrick. Um, to the craziness factor, I. You know, you can say what you want about Trump. The thing is, there are enough military personnel that I believe would step in and prevent him from doing something that would be catastrophic versus North Korea, where he just willy-nilly kills people when they disagree with him on something minor. I mean, if this was North Korea, Steve Bannon would be dead. Yeah. And that, that's the bottom line. So, think, I mean, I, I don't disagree that Trump, you know, a couple cards short of a death, but there are other things in place that our country was built on and that we have that would, I think, prevent something like well, uh, you know, yeah. wouldn't you? You know, we don't have the kind of system they do in in North Korea. We don't have the kind. Of, he doesn't have that same kind of power. He could not do that. But if he had that kind of power, I think he'd be killing people. He might. I really don't think Trump gives a shit what his people think. I really don't. And if you really want to push that button, I can just see him now. Could. What? I, I can just see him now. Jason Kelly around the White House lawn trying to get at that briefcase. <laughs> Come back his, here! His fat ass going after that. <laughs> Around the helicopter? Yeah. Oh, yeah. that would be funny. Yeah. Give me that briefcase now! 
Here he is, going, Get away I, from I, me, you nutcase. All I keep no, thinking to myself, you know my... He's going, he's going. Here it is. When you, you want it? Yeah, when you do a show like I do, uh, you're constantly thinking of, oh, hello there. Uh, we just uh, we just saw Bree. There he is. He put his pa- he put his clothes on. I think is what happened. God uh, damn uh, 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 Is I, I I my brain's always going going. Well, now we've been talking about Trump for quite a long time. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold, huh? <laughs> is there something else? Uh, yeah, is there something else we can talk about? Uh, you know, how can I change the subject? Uh, how can I lighten the whole thing up? And it gets harder and harder. It really does. Because, folks, I don't want to come to you hat in hand every night here with a pocket full of depression. But here it is, pocket full of yeah. depression. Except for Patrick, who has a st- very stoic attitude towards life. Right, Patrick? I, yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm no more happy or unhappy than I was with the last president. So... To me, there's really not much difference. So. Is there is there a president you've been happy with in the last? Yeah. Who? God, uh, Bush. The first, his first term. The second term, he was fucking moron. What did you like about his first term? Um, it, I've always been a hawk. Um, I, you know, I I looked at uh, when the towers were attacked. I. I thought he did the exact right thing. Um, the only thing that bothered me is he did not do what his father did. Which, if you remember H.W. Bush, when we went into Iraq, he said, we're going to do it to free Kuwait, and then we're done. Now he put a limit on it, and W. did not put a limit on anything. So that's then why was Obama criticized when he would have put a little bit on things? Because he was telling us when he was stopping it. Uh, when H.W. Bush went into Kuwait, he, when it was free, that's when we stopped. Obama was broadcasting, well, on April 13th at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, we're going to leave. Well, you don't tell the <laughs> you're done. You tell them you're done after you defeat them. Well, you know, the, my, here, here's, a, here, here's a question for you, Patrick. It's, oh, by the way, it's interesting, Richard. I don't know why, but you're on a delay of some sort. I don't know. You must, must be the bandwidth or something. You have a perfect picture, but when you start talking, the, word, the mouth doesn't move until a, about 10 seconds later. I don't understand what it is. But uh, uh, where are you calling from, Richard? My living room. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, are you there? I mean, do I have his first name right? No, Michael. Excuse me, Michael. That's who I'm talking about. Michael. Me? Yeah, yeah. It, it, somehow you, 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 oh, yeah. I have fiber in this house. I, I have. Yeah, I don't know why. Happened. Man, but isn't he delayed, guys? Do you, no, every, everybody's right on here. Really? Because here, he's out of sync, and you're. Wait a minute. He's cl- he just clapped. Where's the clap? You, you can t- you can tell I'm in television. I I know how to sync. Is, he, Is that not working? Yeah, it worked fine. Yeah, you're- okay. It must be your end, Alex. Could be my end. Could very well be. You never know. You never know where the slowdown is. I have fiber here too. You know, I have that really fast pipe. Now I'm bragging it's like, like bombs uh, coming in. Uh, uh, it's like. Show same, me your gigabits, Alex. I got bigger gigabits, and you got big gigabits. <laughs> yeah, right. My, my, anyway, uh, my pipe is bigger than your pipe. Uh, so, um, um, where were we? What was I saying? We were, we're talking about laying pipe. Oh no! What, no, what, before that, we were talking about about uh, worst president, and you asked oh, me about. Yeah. H.W. Bush. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, you know, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, you were, oh, I know what you were talking about with Obama, you know, saying we're leaving on Tuesday. Um, You know, you have to know when to cut and run. Uh, And that's what I think he knew how to do. Uh, Well, no, but there's no, what we, what, here's the question. What are you going to win? What? Do you, how do you define winning? What is that? You know, if you if you're having a boxing match and you knock the other guy out, you know you've won. But now, what is the definition of winning here? 
Well, that's correct, and that's what that's what H.W. Bush did. Is he knew what the objective was? It was to liberate Kuwait. Once that happened, we went through. And Colin Powell, uh, General Schwarzkopf, everybody knew what the objectives were and what the end game was. And once that was achieved, it was done. But there was no set date. If you remember, you know, they didn't say we're only going to be for three months. It was we're going to do it until the, day, until the um, objective is reached and then we're done. Yeah. And George W. Bush didn't do that, um, which I found disappointing because he could have looked through his dad and said, okay, what well, should be the objective? My question is when they went into Iraq, what was the objective? I don't think yeah, they had there one was either. None. I think that's the problem, too. I don't think they had one. Well, it, it, they went in and, you know, say what you want. Uh, I think they had misinformation, but they had the right intent. Yeah. Um, and once you're there, you're there. So I had no problem with them rooting around for a while. But once they weren't finding anything... I think they should have just said. Well, they they also fucked up while we were there. We had that guy. Uh, was it was his name Brennan that they made the uh, uh, the ambassador to Iraq, and he went in there and he fired the entire Republican army. Oh and, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. sent and sent them home, guns and all. Okay, <laughs> and so they then all got together in some of the prison camps they've been thrown in temporarily, and hatched a plot. And what that plot was and what it turned out to be was a little thing called ISIS. I mean, it's Bush that created ISIS. And it was Brennan's, I think the guy's name was Brennan, if I'm not mistaken, who, who was the architect of that. One of the biggest mistakes ever made. You don't fire the army. You don't piss off the army. And then, and and then on top of that, let them the take their suit. guns home. That's right. You know, so, I mean... One mistake after another. Uh, and um, I got to say something here, and this, this was not going to go well with Patrick, but in a way, Saddam Hussein was a sacrificial lamb. I mean, he was not the most evil person in the area. If anything, because of his heavy hand, he was keeping his house in order. Uh, and without him around and without that heavy hand, ISIS could come into being. And so this is what we got today. Yeah. I think everybody's in sync now. Um, I may be wrong, but I think when we lost Dubai, we got back in sync. Well, a little, <laughs> little off, a little off. Uh, Aaron looks in sync to me. Yeah, see, now you're in sync, Michael. See? It's all Dubai. Dubai was dragging it down. And no wonder, no wonder they won't let them use the Skype over there. Back up the sink. Yeah, they were probably s snooping in on his line. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> anyway, Skype is illegal. Skype is uh, well, it's not illegal. It's just I, I, I understand their thinking. You know, we live in a world of terror. Okay, and the terrorist's best tool is social media. I mean, that's that's how they communicate with each other. Uh, and uh, I think they worry about that. You know, they worry about something they can't control, that they can't get into. And sure. if somebody like Skype doesn't hand them the keys, they don't want anything to do with it. They don't want that, that to happen. And they do live with the reality of, you know, really live with the reality there of terrorism, even though Dubai is pretty much out of the, out of the loop for terrorism. But... Uh, uh, still, you know, you got to be you got to be careful. Um, they're out of the loop, or they're just funding it. Uh, I think they're they're. Uh, uh, the, the, what I'm saying about out of the loop, I mean that they're not really a target for ISIS. You know, uh, although ISIS, I think, is not a big problem anymore because ISIS, like any of these groups, has kind of disappeared into the woodwork, slowly disappearing into the woodwork, and something, mark my words, will replace it. You know, uh, but like uh, after a while, something like, oh, like when's the last time you heard the words Al Qaeda? They're still around, but you don't hear. It. Uh, you know, 
Well, you know, I'm sure Trump will take credit for getting rid of one of them. Well, he's already said, well, I've taken care of ISIS. Actually, Obama had a lot to do with that. Yeah, and, and none of the, no, no uh, what was he claiming today? That there was no uh, terrorist attacks uh, in the air this last year. So thanks, because of me. Uh, he will take claim for anything, <laughs> you know. I mean, I took a big, massive dump before I came on the air today, and I'm sure if Trump was here, he'd take credit for it, you know? Exactly, like he took credit for no accidents in the airlines. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to begin with, I mean, the economy is better, but basically you have to give Obama some of the credit for that because it's still residual from back then. Now, and, the next, You saw the economy he was handed, which was, it tanked. And he turned it around. Who, Obama? Yeah. Yeah, and by the end of his term, it was turning around, and I think the momentum kept going well into the Trump years. And But Trump was taking credit from it on January 20th. You know, oh, hey, the stock market was better today. Oh, yeah, unemployment is down. No, all that had, all the seeds of that were planted. Yeah. You know, and I, I guarantee you what he's doing now is actually going to wind up in the long run, not in the immediate run, but in the long run, hurting the economy. Yes, Patrick. And you know damn well right, if this was the last year of the Trump administration and the Democrat got in next year, they would be taking all the credit for whatever happened during the Trump Well, administration. you know, I won't disagree with you on that, but they'd be, ju they'd be just as wrong. Yeah. But, no, but I'll, tell you, I'll, t I'll tell you what happens, and I know you're going to disagree with me, Mr. Republican. But the de Democrats have always thought we're like a stupid dog, you know? How with a dog, if you pretend like you've got something in your hand and you pretend to throw it, they'll go running after it until they realize it's not the ball, right? And you can, you can do that again, and the dog will go running, and then all of a sudden they'll look back at you like, well, did you throw it? What? Well, the same thing's true with the Democrats. The Democrats want the presidency. They want the presidency. And the De Republicans leave the economy in a shambles, in an absolute shambles. And then when they become, get the, the job, right? We want it, we want it, we want it. All of a sudden they realize they're li living with a dead economy that's now being blamed on them. So Obama Patrick, takes eight in years. The, in the, in the trickle-down? Do you believe in the trickle down, Patrick? Patrick, yeah. Somebody. Um, not necessarily. I mean, I, um, I didn't see any of the benefit from supposed trickle down during the Reagan administration because I was too young. Um, right. But you know, the the thing is, the difference between me and I think most other people on the planet or in the United States, I should say, if I don't sit around all day and bemoan what is going on, whether it's a Democrat in office or a Republican. I don't get my undies in a twist over it because I've got my own shit to worry about, and I worry about me. And I mean, you know... You're not answering the question. What that? Do you think trickle-down economics works? I, I said I haven't seen any results of it, so... Yeah. Um, There'll be no. Right. Yeah. Okay. But, but, you know, I mean, going to everything else, and even with that, I, for me what, to sit and worry about what, what What happens with the you got to sit and worry about it because our taxes just got screwed. Because people who are of your thinking are agreeing and helping out these Republicans pass these reforms that are screwing the little people because of these, they think the trickle down economics works. It doesn't work. What happens they're is the reason, take, reason, the reason, reason, the they're reason, not give the out reason, to the, the, give races yeah. to people. The reason tr trickle down yeah. doesn't work is before it trickles down, there are some rich people there catching it. You know? But that's what are for. And, you know, you don't like what's going on. I don't like what's going on. You know, any of us, there's an election coming up this year. Yeah, but what have we said to America about elections? I mean, here's a guy who lost by three million votes, and he's still president. But it, it, it was, it's legal. The way I know the, it's legal, but, legal. But, but still, what's the residual effect of that on people thinking they can change things? 
because they've seen the situation where they went and voted for 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 Hillary Clinton by three million votes more than Trump, and still he's sitting in the in in the president's chair. People then get very disenchanted about this ability that you can change things at the ballot box. That's their fucking problem. Then I mean, you know, if if do you think if, you can change things at the ballot box, if, Patrick? If, in to think that, you know, oh, well, I'm just going to sit home. I don't want to hear any bitching. I mean, it's just my, what happened in um, uh, Alabama. You know, people sat home. Um, Roy Moore lost, yes, but uh, a Democrat got in. And, you know, now you're hearing Republican bitch down there that, okay, well, a Democrat, well, you should have went out and voted that. It, I wouldn't support Roy Moore, but if anywhere else, I mean, you don't like what happens. Did you go out and vote? If you did, fine. If you didn't, don't bitch. I don't want to hear. Do you it. think that's why Trump's in office because people didn't go out and vote? No, he he's in office because of the electoral college. Well, I mean, but all I'm saying is the residual effect of that is is that people say. You know, we voted a majority to not have Trump as president, but he is president. So what? what's the sense of me voting? What's the sense of me being proactive? I mean, do you really feel we can change anything, Patrick, at the ballot box? Yeah, I, we did it in Wisconsin. I mean, we had, fuck, uh, 12, 12 years of a Democrat in office for a uh, uh, governor, and we had a Democrat running uh, the Assembly and, and the Senate. And we voted them out in uh, 2010. And before that, there was a Republican in for about 12 years. I think it was three three terms. And the Democrat turned out, and they got his ass out. I mean, you know, maybe my state is just different that way. But when people don't like something, they will vote, and they will, you know, turn it over. I mean... But that's uh, that's in this in the state. We're talking about the nation. You yeah, know. but yeah, that's the thing is, this year it had nothing to do with the presidency. You can make the difference in your state because if you want the Senate to turn over to the Democrats, or you want the Congress or the uh, uh, the House to turn over to the Democrat, you have to vote the Democrat. So you got to go out and vote. That's where it well, changes. Uh, 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 Change the majority than the House and the Senate. I'll, uh, I'll, and the yeah. I'll tell you the stupidity of things is that already I'm watching television, and they're starting to ask their panelists, you know, their pundits, uh, the same question over and over again. Well, who do you think's going to run for president in the next <laughs> election? It's three fucking years away. You know, oh, yeah, Kirsten, they're already talking about Bannon. No, they're saying that Kirsten Gillibrand is uh, is got her sights set on the White House, and 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 the blood she has on her hands, you know, is uh, uh, what's his name, Al Franken. So mm. whatever. Hey, listen, everybody, it's been turning a really good show. I really liked it. Uh, thank you so much, Jeff, for being here this evening. Thanks also to Bree, who had to, I guess, get off. Uh, Kevin, thank you for being here. Patrick, same to you. Michael, always good to hear from you because uh, you're really intelligent. You got something to say, and you get all liquored up and you get piss and vinegar. So, uh, and, and, and Mike, thank you. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, in the meantime, I think that would be nice right now is if all of you uh, gave the audience a big wave goodbye, and we'll say good night to all of you. Okay, panel. Nice seeing you. Bye. Okay, that's it for our panel tonight. That's uh, it for the show tonight. You know, every night when I come in here lately, I go, I just don't feel like doing a show. And after it's all over, I went, boy, that was a good time. And I have to thank the, the citizens panel for being the reason for that. And, of course, uh, you for listening to it. Uh, but some of you should turn around and decide to call sometime. That would be nice as well. I'm Alex Bennett. Uh, Jack and Amy are next with The Intersection, followed at 1 o'clock in the morning Eastern Standard Time by Connections. I'll be here again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? <laughs>